Hello everybody and welcome back for the final round coverage of the 2017 Turd Disc and Open presented by Prodigy Disc. I'm Chris Dickerson and I'm here with the tournament director, John Garcia. Thanks for joining everybody. And we'll lead off here on hole one with a little bit of a different card than last round. Good luck. Good luck. What? Darn. Hey, I'm was back. Like, he's drunk, and he was I'm like, back. I just want oh, you just to man, know. You as well. So I just want you to know that if you and Chris all kinds together, of different clothing here, a little bit of winter clothing, some stylish clothing, and even some golf attire. We don't have our sharp dressed man on this card, but we do have a uh, red bearded stranger, Zach oh. Melton. Drink. Got the putting champion Weston Isaacs. And we've got an amazing roller that decided to turn around and roll away completely. Oh, that's great. Good shot. <laughs> yeah, oh, you can tell Weston is just loving it that it didn't sit down and roll halfway <laughs> back down the hill. <laughs> Went from three feet to probably 100, 125 feet down. Now this hole, I must say, is incredibly lefty friendly, but the red bearded stranger has seemed to have left this down at the bottom of the hill. Yeah, being left handed, you can really just throw something slightly over stable and let it fade into that hillside instead of having to turn something the whole way or try and throw a roller. I don't think so. And it looks like Weston's roller just peeled out just a little bit early. Now, the day before, he did nearly hit an ace. He missed the ace by just a couple of inches with just a backhand air shot straight at it. So I'm surprised to see he didn't go with it. Now, this throw, Mr. Peeler is known for his thumbers, which I have to say, I read it in an article that it's illegal in 11 countries, and the state of California recognizes it. It could possibly cause hemorrhoids. So I'm not sure why he throws them so often. But he is very good at them. I'm curious which of the countries are, which of those 11 countries are, you where know, it's illegal. Legal. Yeah, where, got my words all twisted, turned upside down. <laughs> Oh, uh, that was a good bid at it. Actually, you ended up not too far away. You're only about 60 feet down there, 70 feet down, but still, that straight uphill is a tough one to come back with. Yeah, on this hole, you really want your putt to be close so you don't have, have to worry about the danger of rolling away or anything like that. I was fortunate enough to get to see and, and laugh at some of the uh, rollaways on this hole throughout the day, and it was good to see a lot of people having some fun out there. Uh, we did have a, a really good crew out there, so uh, there was a little bit of razzing going on, on all across the course, but this hole presented quite a few uh, funny moments. All right, now we're coming up on hole two, sponsored by Pisca Brewing Company, who has one of the best outdoor stages in Western North Carolina. And if you're in town to see a show there, you should definitely check it out. This is a, uh, for most people, it's gonna be a forehand throw, about 260 feet. There's a little bit of danger directly behind the basket here. There is a sand trap over to the right and a golf green off to the yeah. left. But generally speaking, most of you guys are just gonna throw a nice easy forehand up at it yeah I changed my disc selection a little bit in between the first and second round through uh, a little bit more of a disc there a D1 so it has more speed and it'll end up getting there a little bit faster yeah it looks like it paid dividends there <laughs> that uh, made for a much easier second putt And with this shot, Justin looks at Weston and says, oh. you know, you know when you're a thumber player. Nope. He gave it a little bit of a run, but ended up coming up a hair short. Uh, Tim Barr, it's all his fault. Uh-huh, that hit a lot of chains. <laughs> 
Well, we want to thank Tim and Donna, by the way. They did bring these baskets down to us. For those of you who don't know Tim and Donna, they run quite a few tournaments in the Tennessee, in the East Tennessee area, and those guys are great ambassadors for the sport. Coming up into this next hole, we have Louise's Kitchen, who is a two-year sponsor. We want to thank Bud and Carissa again for sponsoring our tournament. Thanks so much, guys. And here we have the first of three island holes. Basically, just land in the island, take your putt, and try not to go OB. Yeah. I have to believe that if you didn't hit that great, it probably would have stayed in, but it is just outside the OB line there. Yeah, the hill behind it plays as a good backstop, usually. Weston just wanted to test the uh, limits of the boundary as well. And give it a little bit of a run over there. Yes, sir. Now that was some fortunate soft ground right there to tombstone in like that. Yeah, with a shot like that, he really doesn't have to worry about the skip or even the roll away. Oh, just outside. A lot of chains again from what probably is the furthest corner on the green. Yeah, definitely. Looks like the lefty was able to get it done, get the job done. Wes and Isaac's able to finish up for his birdie, a.k.a. the short game. Yeah, you could say a short game's pretty good. Uh, 2012 World Putting Champ, is that is that right? That's correct. He's got a uh, he's got a pure to prove it. Zach's trying to steal this from somebody. Coming up into uh, our next hole, we're sponsored by the Universal Join out in West Asheville. We want to thank those guys for supporting us. Now this, we've got an uphill battle the entire way. For Zach, it ought to be a pretty pretty nice, uh, just throw a nice backhand at it. Gives him a nice landing zone in the middle of the fairway. Unless you leave it too far right, and that just puts you on the side of a hill. And that's right where you don't want to be. Usually a disc coming into the hillside like that will more times than not roll down to the bottom, but Zach catches an unlucky soft spot there. Now Weston lays down a great roller, but it did stay up on that hill as well. He got quite a ways down there, but it was not able to get down into the, uh, the better footing of the valley there. Now this is a surprise here. Peeler did not utilize this uh, thumber on this hole, which he did last round. And that roller started going quite a ways as well. And it peeled back a little bit, but it looks like he'll be just fine down in the middle of the fairway. And there you can see where that footing gets into you, uh, gets into your throw and impacts what you're trying to do. Zach was not quite able to get down there the way he would like to. Yeah, being on a hillside like that, it's hard to manipulate a disc to get it to turn over. Stay up there. And that is basically how you want to draw it up. Good shot, Chris. Excellent shot. Again, you can see how the side of that hill is it's messing with you a little bit, but Weston was able to get right up next to it anyway. Zach gives it a great bid for his three. Peeler wants to do some push-ups. So the rest of the car definitely made him drop and do 20 right there after yep. he laid that one up. 
It's like nobody knew whether to clap or not. They're like, do we clap for that? <laughs> And like I said in the last round, there weren't too many birdies on this hole, and we just saw a couple of them, and you guys definitely made it look easy. And I think over the entire tournament, there might have been only been about 10 birdies on that hole. Just throw it that close every time, I got a problem. So we got a couple of birds, a couple of pars, coming into our next <laughs> hole here. We're live. And hole five plays slightly downhill with a little bit of a ceiling, playing basically into a backstop. You just want to throw it in that hillside and then have a putt? That's a terrible shot. And you roll Wesson just wanted to show you guys how that you can hit the side of the hill and bounce up onto one of the plateaus so that you guys weren't scared of doing that. I'm trying to get Marty. So he definitely showed you exactly how to do that. It yeah, I really, really nice like it. I really liked Wesson's line, so I figured I would follow him. Hit a car. No. Drop hard. Drop hard. And as you can hear the razzing going on in the background, we highly encourage it at this tournament. There's about 25 guys standing behind this car, and the Wicked Wheat Head was there with all their guys. So there's definitely some trash talking going on. Getting some positive reinforcement there from Weston Isaacs. No. <laughs> He's <your> <laughs> Looks like uh, Karma came back and bit him a little bit on uh, some of his trash talking from earlier. Uh, so frustrating. <laughs> yeah, Good nobody fun, likes to spill their drink. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, close, but not quite. Yeah. And the red bearded stranger able to come back for his par save. That was excellent. Wes, do you want to pick it up? Yeah. <laughs> yep. And Peeler are able to round it out with a birdie. For those of you who don't know the red bearded stranger, Zach Melton. The red headed stranger would be Willie Nelson. So it's an homage to Willie. All right, well, we did get a couple of birdies out of that one. Coming up on the next hole, we are sponsored by the one, the only, Western North Carolina Disc Golf Association, the greatest disc golf club on the planet. Hashtag 521. This hole has a couple of different routes, and this is the second round in a row where you took right up the pipe, going right down the middle, seem to work for you both rounds pretty well yeah Looks I was fortunate like... enough to hit my line basically if you hit the gap no. then that's most of the battle yeah. you see a lot of different routes on this on this hole in particular at 250 feet, you have plenty of room to, to get creative. Yes, sir. It's right at circle's edge, a nice birdie there. Yeah. And the short game, able to show you is longer short game. wanted to putt from the other side of the basket. He felt like the wind was just not quite right on that side of the basket. Yeah, it, a little bit better from the opposite side. Yeah, he just had to get over there and, and take care of business. Wide open par for you here. The basket sits on the right side of the tree line. Thank you. 
in this one, if you can get up to that ridge, it leaves you with a really nice look at the basket. Uh, being down to the left a little bit does give you a, a nice straight look at it, but the closer you can get to that ridge line, the better the your next look is going to be. And Weston. goes the wrong direction. Uh, I went. It just doesn't went want to sit down. Okay. <laughs> Very abnormal throw from Justin Peeler there. Looked like he actually went regular backhand. Yeah, I was about to say that Thummer didn't quite get over the top. Zach needed to beat that disc in a little bit, so he wanted to make sure he hit the asphalt first. Gosh. Yeah, come on. That's a long putt. You got the Thummer guys talking trash to each other, so I always like to hear that. Get up. Okay. Yeah, right. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> and I think by throwing that sidearm, Weston admitted defeat to Justin. He said, you know, your thumber is just superior. I'm pretty sure that's what he said. And Justin did not want to take the risk of running at that one. Oh. And man, Weston said, bad. I will gladly show you how to putt from the other side of this basket. Good putt. Good putt. Good And for the thousands in attendance, Zach Melton drumming up the crowd. No, you. You go. Weston with a solid putt to save par. And there's a birdie. Looks like you're stringing together another, uh, another nice little run. All right, coming up into hole eight, we have another similar hole to hole six, only downhill on this one. We have the OB road on the right hand side that kind of keeps a lot of people um, throwing this flick route for the right hand throwers. A little bit safer route. Yeah, as long as you can make the initial gap, it's the safer of the two routes in my opinion. Yeah, good job. Thank you. And for the lefty, I'm pretty sure this was just drawn up for him in particular. Weston's disc wanted to go down the middle the entire time and would not allow him to get outside of that tree. So he's forced to go down the tunnel now. As you can tell, that's what he wanted to do the whole time. Did you guys make Peeler do push-ups after that one? Um, I'm not sure. I think I think that was just outside the um, the push-up range. Gotcha, gotcha. And you guys both able to square up on those and. Get your birdies and move on. Weston making it look easy from 32 feet. <laughs> Miss America. <man. laughs> and WNC Disc Golf got to sponsor one of the most picturesque holes on the whole course. I could tell you're getting serious about this hole. You got the t -shirt. you're down to the the short sleeve on this one. Yep, I lost the long sleeve. Figured I would show the the blue golf shirt. Just for one shot though. Chris, I can't throw a roll. Oh, you did. Course maintenance. And that was an excellent excellent throw. Had to break out the blue for that one for sure. I like it.
and Zach needs to get his over just a little bit more, but he's still in the middle and should have a relatively open up shot. Now, for those of you from the area, you can might recognize that voice in the background to be one of one of the uh, the one and only Nathan Keller. He's actually four holes away, but his voice is so booming that you can hear it all the way from there. lead off this tee with a with a thumber you know I don't oh, remember nice but he did last round I know that I don't get it, man. he's a thumber aholic so he probably did yes mm-hmm but he's able to put him right where he means and able to capitalize on that. Walking away with the bird. Two rounds in a row, Peeler is able to get his birdie on this hole. Last year, I believe the basket set on that stump, didn't it? It did. The stump disintegrated a little too much for us to be able to do it. Last year we had uh, the DGM crew and Harry Peters able to, to mount it up there, but this year they were not able to get it mounted to it. It was just falling apart too much. Our next hole coming into hole 10 is sponsored by Foggy Mountain Brew Pub. It's two years running they've sponsored this event. Those guys are really great and they make some of the best wings in Asheville. Now this is a shorter hole, again through the woods, and uh, we're at 200 and, we say 240 something feet on this one, but it does play uphill the entire time. Yeah, basically you wanna throw something straight to slightly overstable through that gap and let it fade a little bit to the left away from the road. There's a lot of construction going on um, almost directly across the street from this hole. We'll call it. You might hear some jackhammers going on. And uh, there are various uh, construction tools. Zach able to make an excellent putt there. Weston to match Zach on the hole. Just waving to the passers by on the street there. We had some dog walkers coming by that didn't know what the heck we were doing on a golf course with Frisbees. Peeler very cautious not to injure the thumb. Coming up on the hole 11, we're sponsored by Heath at So What You Want, custom screen printing who made the shirts for us and the signs. We want to thank him a lot. What do we got going on on this hole? Basically, throw it as far as you can. Keep it in between the uh, trees on the right and left. It's better to be, in my opinion, it's better to be perfectly straight off the tee pad. That way you're cutting down the distance you have for your second shot. But if you're over to the right, that'll just leave you with a, a forehand or a turnover approach. Short. We are going to see 
four completely different styles here from your backhand, right hand, backhand, Zach's left hand, backhand. We had an overhand and a roller. We got to see some, uh, some different avenues of getting to the basket on this one. Yeah, a that lot of variety. Right. Yeah. Looks like the outcome's all pretty darn good on all of them. It's one of our other chauffeured players. Probably a good tree. Yeah, he might have been lucky by hitting that tree. He could have easily gone out of bounds and across the road on that one. Zach takes a similar line as Weston, just a little bit higher and comes in with less speed. I'm pretty sure he used different words. Something like a little bit better, I think oh. is what he said. I could see that. <laughs> But Weston likes to test himself on those putts anyway. And that was a great putt to capitalize on that upshot. Looks like we're going to be able to see a couple of birdies on this hole. Now our next hole we're going to get into is also sponsored by Wicked Weed. Those guys were great all weekend, leading up to the event and at the event. What are you throwing out there? This is a M2, so pretty straight, slightly overstable. Yeah, it looks like you'll leave yourself right inside the circle there. Oh yeah, you an uphill look at it, but it should be should be just fine. All right. Last round, this gap created a little bit of a problem for 25 percent of our card. So let's see if we can get all four of them out this time. Looks like everybody be up there. Peeler and Weston just too far outside. Looks like you have a longer putt than that, though. You're 40. Putt. Excellent putt. You're about 40, 45 feet out, don't you think? Yeah, left my drive a little bit low. Giving Weston some pointers on those. And we'll clean up the rest of these for par here. Moving into our next hole, we've got another island coming up. And this one's quite a bit more dangerous. We had a lot of people leaving it a little too short and a little too long. Um, both of which were OB. So uh, let's see if this card can make some corrections. And we had some high scores in the last round on this hole. Yeah, usually going into an island hole of any kind, there's a lot of stress that's building up before you tee off. This lined up just fine for Zach. It looks like he's going to be pretty darn close in there. There you go. Way better than last time. Yeah. Nice. And it look, looks like Weston has made some corrections from last round as well. Oh, socks. Go! Cut roll back off. I think Peeler did not have his thumb in there. It looks like he tried to actually flick it, so I think that might have been his mistake. He needed to go with the thumber. 
Yeah, I think he okay. accidentally had the disc upside down in his hand for that throw. Yeah, you guys should have warned him about that when he go. didn't get into that hole. I hear so many hit off, like, three strokes swing. Oh, two's better yeah, than there's five. Weston telling you it is a three, three stroke swing on that hole for him. Uh, quite a bit better outcome this round. Five. Looks like everybody else is going to finish up with the bird. And for the thousands in attendance, Zach is just riling up the crowd again, flexing on baskets, intimidating the cameraman. <laughs> Our next hole is sponsored by our bag tag sponsor for the year, Highwire Brewing Company. Chris and the guys down at Highwire are awesome. They make some great beer. If you get a chance, grab a six pack. Say the WNC Disc Golf Association sent you. And what you didn't get to see in between last hole and this hole was actually Zach received a penalty for excessive celebration. So that's a. I think a 15-yard penalty back off the tee pad. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Horrible design to hold all that room on the left. <laughs> and Weston giving him some hell still about about that. Oh, you see it. Short. Yeah. <laughs> but of course, he left it a little nose up and ended up going out a little bit to the left, farther than what he would have would have liked. Now Peeler, on the other hand, showing us a little bit of his uh, versatility. Uh, with the backhand again. And he was almost able to get all the way there on a 420-foot hole. Tim Barr strikes again. That's one of the slowest spit-outs I've ever seen. That's an amazing putt. It's unfortunate it didn't quite stick. Zach gives him a high five, so don't worry. Cheer up. Cheer up. You'll get it next time. <laughs> Consummate professional out there. No, that's a stroke. Good three, Zach. Chris, Chris, hey, go Marty, check. Marty, come over here. Go check the scores over So he's going to tap in normal, get this, and then he's going to pull it back out and then do like a provisional. Yeah, you got to get Chris, this, come up this on the this Okay. And we've got the shenanigans starting here. Right, here so, uh, provisional. Okay, provisional. Nose down, flip it over the rim. Trick shot. What's up, Simon? What's up, Simon? No, you got it. And Zach hard. calling out what, Simon Lazat, saying okay, one more, one more. Like he's got a better okay, trick shot. Why do you throw it so hard? That's aggressive. <laughs> 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 it doesn't look like it worked out too well, but at least it was fun. So we got a couple of birds out of that hole. Heading into our next hole, sponsored by the WNC Disc Golf Association. Now this hole comes in as the most difficult hole on the course. And as a TD, I heard more about complaints about this hole than any other hole, which probably means it's an excellent, excellent hole. You know, I think you're right. The more the more people say the hole is uh, too tough or, you know, they just don't like it, I, th I think that's actually coming across as you did a good job and we really like it. <laughs> now, Weston is going to show us a new route that uh, is out very, very close to the OB. Something we had not planned on uh, when laying out this hole. And Peeler just barely stays in right there. That was a great upshot. Oh, wow. Now you guys on video can't quite see the mess that he was in, as bad as it was, but that was seriously a crazy shot. He 
was able to get out of danger with that. Come on! Yes! Good job, Zach. That's perfect. And that leaves you with a nice open look at your uh, approach to the green. Yeah, good placement yeah, shot out of the edge of the woods. You know, I was just on the tip of the iceberg yeah, compared to where Weston was. Just give him over all the... Ah, 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 ah. Turn lemon to lemonade. <laughs> oh, good. Good job, stop the tree right now. Yeah, Peeler wanted to see what was going on on that side of the green, which apparently is out of bounds. I think he's saying you're in. I love how Zach says, I think he's saying you're in. He's def that was Mr. Tom Williams, definitely saying he was out of bounds. And Zach approaches this incredibly lefty, friendly green. <laughs> now, did you end up having to do push-ups after that? Um, maybe a couple, but only because I specified beforehand that I was going to lay it up. Gotcha. Now, Peeler definitely needed to do some push-ups after his. So it looks like Zach had a chance at the bird. Was not able to capitalize on that one. I thought leading up to that, you would end up with a uh, trick shot as well. Uh, you know, just saving it for, for the right hole. Well, coming into our next hole on hole 16, we want to thank French Broad Outfitters, one of the best disc golf stores in the area. And they've got a great little bar, and I know they're down there right now watching this round. So thanks for watching, guys. And that's the store at the bottom of the hill at Richmond Hill, correct? Yes. As you're going into uh, Richmond Hill, you can stop there and uh, pick up some new discs. They've even got a uh, lost and found for the many, many discs that are lost at Richmond Hill. Looks like Weston was able to get a nice pull on this one. Zach needed that to hold on just a little bit longer. He's going to end up down pretty good ways uh, down the hill there in the rough. Yeah, where Weston and myself hazard out into the valley on the left side, Zach didn't get his turned over very much and hazard out in the valley on the right side. And as you can hear, well, yeah. um, that's Peeler wow, getting called out on his illegal okay. throws. And that was Nate Keller. He was, again, three holes away on that one. Yeah, with all these illegal throws, the strokes are really starting to add up. Yeah, yeah. Thank God it's not in California. I think it's a it's a one and a half stroke penalty out there. Mm. I think that's short. Yeah, short. Yeah. And from where he was, that was again. An amazing upshot. There's really no lines whenever you get through these woods. Zach was a little worried about that downhill right behind the basket for sure. It's a tough hill right behind it. Looks like everybody will tap in their car on this one. 
Yeah, that hole got the best of uh, both rounds on this lead card, the feature card and the lead card. Well, it looks like we have a sizable lead by somebody at the top. There's been a nice battle between Zach and Weston all day. Now this hole comes in at 502 feet, not 645. No, we were all kind of trash talking each other, saying, you know, if you go for it, I will. And I think we're going to see some uh, different kinds of technique coming up on the card. Now, the camera does not stop rolling at this point. I'm just going to say that right away, Zach goes straight in. Get up! over it. And right away, Peeler has now thrown. It's in the air. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. I think they're Looking calling good. That. Yeah. rapid yeah. fire. <laughs> and it really got the crowd into it. That's for sure. Yeah, the feeling in the air right now is just electric. We had some uh, we had some partying going on by some of the bystanders. And that is a two by Weston Isaacs. He was about seven feet away on a 500 foot throw. That was a pretty amazing two. That was officially the only two in the tournament on this hole. And win like that, that that's pretty amazing. It's a great throw. Weston got a two. Zach wants to make it very clear that Weston indeed did to this hole. <laughs> yep, he did let everybody around know. We're coming up on the final hole of the round, sponsored by Lookout Brewing Company. Happens to make the it, best though. beer on the planet. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. That's what I've heard. Beer. It's amazing. Weston's laying something out pretty wide. It's going to have to come back and fight. Looks like he just got the right skip and the right roll. And that is just incredible to be able to control your disc like that. Absolutely. You're a loser. And Zach got the uphill roll. Very uncharacteristic. That's a putter. That's a putter. Oh, and out. that oh. was what disc? <laughs> it was a PA3. I somehow got conned uh, into uh, throwing a putter off this tee pad. I think you could have reached it with the right, with the right angle on it. Peeler was going to go for this um, woodpecker that was up in this tree. He was really annoyed by that bird and um, kind of scared off there. As casual as he got down there with his next throw, it was really no problem. Zach going really hard trying to put this in. Sports Center call was made. <laughs> Zach preparing to lay down a dab after Weston putts. <laughs> and it's good to see these guys all with uh, some good uh, camaraderie and having a good time out there on the disc golf course. Yeah, All it's right. always nice to play around and be able to cut up and just enjoy your day while you're out there. Absolutely. And it looks like you were able to narrowly escape with the win. And that makes two years in a row. The uh, Yeah, just barely being able to escape defeat this weekend. 
Well, we had a really good crew out there. We had a ton of good uh, competitors. Our open division was very... <laughs> a lot of fun was had out there. So we want to thank all of our sponsors. We want to thank Marty for doing all the recording and everybody else who was a part of this. Thank you so much for joining us. Till next time, have a good day.